I talked about Graeber before, right? Excuse me? Daniel or David Graeber, the anthropologist? Possibly. It sounds vaguely familiar to me. I think I can say what I mean to say pretty quickly. So I was, <laughs> I was studying money and he wrote a book called 5,000 Years of Debt. Right. And he's a brilliant guy. Probably a little bit hard to deal with, I imagine, but a brilliant guy. Um, and there's a point in his story. So he was telling, he said, hey, by the way, the story of how money works is totally not real. Like not even vaguely history. Let me tell you this story from an anthropological perspective. Like, let's get it right. Right. Um, and one of the one of the just kind of like almost passing things in the story, he said, and by the way, it's kind of interesting, but it kind of seems to follow an arc whenever we do the money thing. You know, it starts out with real relationships, people who know each other and right. something along the lines of debt. And then something around the notion of, of, of externalizing those relationships into an artifact. Right. Usually a pretty simple artifact, like a, a chalkboard at a pub that happens to be the center of the, of the village. Right. Um, and then there's a movement. And by the way, this is very, you're going, you know, this is right. Like you get this like from the participatory okay. up to the yeah. propositional, a movement of a continuing externalization, alienization, alienation of the relationships of, of debt you know, like I am in your debt at a heartfelt level yes. into an increasingly abstract and artifacted form oh. um, that, you know, moves from a ledger into a tally stick and moves from a tally stick into a, a coin and moves from a coin into a piece of stamped coin and moves from a stamped coin into a paper bill and moves from a paper bill into a, you know, just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there's, he's like, there's that move. And here's the other move that I keep noticing collapse. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of other stuff that happens. You know, for example, you can't do highway robbery of the fact that I'm in your debt for telling me that story, John. Like, there's no yeah. highway robber who can come to me and extort from me the meaningfulness of the Buddha story. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like it's, it's insane to even think about it because, of course, I would share it with him. Please listen. Yes. Um, yeah. You can only steal gold, right? You can only steal alienated artifacts that are are holding something which is a reification and a. Mm. Um, and a, uh, well, an alienation of the real relationship, right? And, and that by itself creates a society built around alienation and reification and yes, propositional yes. artifacting of relationality, which leads to a society that has two characteristics. One is that it explodes in superficial materialist proliferation. Yeah. And the other is its soul shrinks and dies and it collapses. Yes. Yes. This seems to happen. Like he talks about the Bronze Age collapse in those terms. He was able to oh, dig back behind that. Yeah. And he said, and here's the other thing that seems to happen, at which point he just leaves off because I think he just, just wasn't interested in going into it. Then you get religious revivals. Mm. All the religions that, that we've seen more or less have had been born in these moments where there was a uh, literally like a monetary collapse, which right. associated with other things, yeah. but a monetary collapse followed by a social collapse. And then there was a religious, a new religion was born into it. Right, right. And this is like 10 years ago when I read this, maybe, maybe even more, maybe 12 or 15 years ago, but I took note of it. It's like, hmm, that's really interesting. It's just a sheer hypothesis. Maybe there's something to track. And I got to tell you, as days and weeks and months and years have passed on, more and more uh, clearly, that's what's up. Hmm. Right? So when we're talking about the sacred today and many of the conversations we've been having, you know, the religion that's not a religion, to steal the culture yep. is to reawaken the soul in this sense, right? to reawaken an awareness of this modality, yeah. to and, and then to and then to begin the process of of supporting. Right? We're all now like learning together, um, you know, co-parenting each other yes. in the artfulness of living through and with this modality. And by the way, not exclusively, right? That's a that's just as much of an error as, yeah. the, as, yeah. as the other, um, but. That's it, right? And, and this is like the you know, awakening from the meaning crisis is awakening to the awareness of this modality and then stepping into the oftentimes very difficult, in fact, by, their, by its very nature, excruciatingly painful, um, learning how to actually navigate in that life. Because one of the things that will happen, you know, just think about your, for example, I, uh, I was somebody who had not experienced much grief into adulthood. Right, as one of these not trustworthy people and dangerous people as a consequence. Um, I should say, by the way, one of the interesting artifacts of our particular economic and political system is that that's how you rise to the top of power. Mm. This is how you get a psychopathic civilization. 
right. is skillful avoidance of, of metabolizing grief and becoming mature goes hand in hand, not perfectly, but hand in hand with the kinds of skills that enable you to be very effective at kind of game theoretic uh, sociopathy. That's um, a great connection, Jordan. And that's how you get powerful. Yeah. So now you got a world run by powerful people who are dangerous and not trustworthy. Yeah. And that tends to collapse, by the way. So that's one of the reasons why it collapses and collapses in the way that it does. Okay, so I'm one of those people. Um, and where's that? What's happening here? And in the process of awakening, come face to face, this is like AA. Right. I got a lot of shit I got to deal with. Yeah. All right. Many of which, much of which I still haven't dealt with um, in myself. I got a whole bunch of defense mechanisms that have built up yeah. over decades and have hardened. And the stuff that they're built around, therefore, are like festering wounds that have been sitting in there for decades. And of course, are wrapped around narratives and are wrapped yeah. around identity structures, right? Yeah. This Gordian knot of self yeah. that has to be untangled. And every single time you untangle it, you kind of go through this process of um, coming to terms with the thing. But then the grief yeah, right? yeah. then the suffering of actually having to actually metabolize it and go through the thing that you avoided so studiously for so long and all the interest, right? It carries, it buries interest. It carries a lot of interest. Um, and if you, you know, and, and, and in my experience, at least there's an avoidance. Oh, okay. It seemed like it had to happen and that sucks. I'm not going to do that. Maybe not quite so explicitly, but yeah. you build some certain skillfulness and avoidance. It's funny, actually, I'm, so many people, this is one of the things I want to really put out there because it's, you know, it's so true. It, is, it simply seems to be the case that the further along you go on that journey, the more preciously you hold those things that have survived not being worked through. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. Like there's, in some sense, there's all kinds of trauma and all kinds of shame and all kinds of defense mechanisms that you can work through, but almost by a process of evolutionary selection, the stuff that you didn't work through is all the more intensely held. Exactly. That's exactly um, right. Which makes it a harder and harder thing to do, which is why we have to have friendships, right? It's, yes. it's only in relationship and only with an increasingly intense and sophisticated and trustworthy and caring relationships that we can find a way to continue to kind of get through that. There's no singular way of doing it. So anyway, sorry, that was, no, that was beautiful. I that seems to me to be the journey. As far as I can tell, like if you really want to um, kind of wave your hands at where we are, and I mean this like at a geopolitical, socioeconomic, technological level, I'm going to use a lot of cool nerdy words. Um, it comes all the way back down to the fact that we're all going to have to heal a lot in all the ways, really hard to do. Um, the only way for us to do it is to get better and better at being good friends and better and better at building this coin, this term sovereignty, building our own sovereignty and building our relationships, supporting each other um, from zero, from the base state, you know, no preconceived propositions guiding what's up because that's all secondary. And if you allow that to become primary, it gets hardened on the inside and reifies itself back out into the world that you create and, and, and fast, you know, clock is very much ticking on this particular collapse event. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but if you look around, it really does seem like it's all sociopaths and psychopaths in charge of the uh, tools of power. And the tools of power are very powerful. Yeah. Not a good place to be.